Hello guys, I'm back with episode 2 uh, of uh, FTB Unleashed in, Jacob, in Jaco's Let's Play series. So, uh, last time we found out that we apparently are on an island. There was an island in that direction, and a snow biome in that direction on a different island. And there's a nice forest in the middle of our island. And we've got chickens, pigs, and cows. So, uh, I don't know any anything to do with Thumbcraft yet. Oh, and if you leave things in the comments, I'll probably not reply to them. I might, uh, but uh, I will be reading the comments. So... Also, when you leave comments, I won't respond to them until next week because I'm recording all of these episodes on Saturday and Sunday. And I am I'm putting them on YouTube across the week. Uh, so so I will only start I only respond to the comments uh, starting on uh, starting on Saturday and Sunday that when I'll make the episodes. And then I'll post them on YouTube on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, let's see. I don't have a bed yet, which is bad. I really need to make a bed at some point. But for that I need to find sheep. Or, no, wait. I have stream. I can make wool and then make a bed. Okay. I didn't think of that, but that'll work. So, ooh. bed. I'll just put the bed over here. And, okay. Now, as I showed you before, I'm making a path here. Eventually I'll make it out of that Thomcraft Traveler's Paving Stone once I get the research unlocked for that. So I'll, I'll just uh, continue on. I'll pause the recording. Okay, so in this episode I'm going to be making a smeltery. So if you remember from last episode, for that I need sand gravel and clay, so I'm collecting the sand right now, and then I'll collect the clay and then the gravel. But I, oh, my shovel broke. See, it, it takes a lot longer than it would with your fists when your shovel's broken, but with a tool station, you can set that down anywhere and repair your tool. So, like, you can re even repair a tool if it has most of its durability, so you can do that. And then you can break this really quickly with an axe. So then, I guess I'll just be collecting the sand, and I'll be right back. Okay, well I finished mining the sand, and in case you're wondering how I'll mine the clay uh, without drowning, I'll just use doors. So, you can it's like an air pocket. Doors create an air pocket, so you can just mine like this from inside the door. So that is pretty neat. So, I'm just going to be mining clay for a while, and I'll be back. Okay, so I finished mining the clay. See, I've got uh, two stacks plus twenty. You'll need somewhere around that to be able to start. Probably at least that much to start making smeltery. And I'm pretty low on food. I might just start killing the chickens around and eating them, but no, I want to keep them. Actually, I'll just kill them. Yep, I'm gonna kill them. Die, 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 die. Where are you, chickens? Chickens, come here. I want to eat you. Chickens. Chickens. Okay, pigs will work. Pigs, come here. Pigs. Okay, you know, chickens will work then. Chickens, chicken, 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 here, chicken, chicken, chicken. 
see, he heard me and came to me. So I'm gonna... I know that we break through the square like that. Randomly. Well, I guess I'll go home and cook all this. Probably eat a few blueberries. Well, at least the ones that are thrown. But soon I won't need to eat blueberries. I mean, eat the animals around anymore at all. So, I'm gonna do this. And I'll be back once I'm ready to go mining. Okay, so I'll show you the mine now. See, I I built stairs up up the mine. I might I might make the roof uh, one block up uh, so that I don't keep bumping my head on the way down like this. Ow, 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 like that. There's also uranium here that I couldn't find because I haven't made an iron pickaxe yet. I did find iron, as you saw before, but I haven't made an iron pickaxe yet. Okay, so I made a really long path here, just above lava level, and I ran into a ravine. So, I went up into it. There just happened to be water pouring down, so I blocked off the water. And of course there's some gravel. Over there is the abandoned mine shaft that I found the TNT cars in. So, I'm just gonna keep mining gravel for a while. For a really long time, I guess. And then I'll be back. Okay, so now I got the gravel. 64 plus 64 plus 20. So, I'm going to go back up to my house. And the nice thing about stairs, the, what, the reason I use them that for going up like this is for one, you don't have to jump, and for two, you can sprint up them and go really fast up. Of course, I didn't put stairs here because there's uranium. So, you can also see, see how fast I'm going up. That is why I use stairs. Oh, and it's bedtime. So, now it's daytime, and I'm going to be crafting some ground. So, one way to craft it is by making clay blocks, and then putting them there, like that. Putting sand there, and gravel there. At least I thought that was the point. Oh, we probably need to do this. Yep, that's how you do it. That gives you eight grout, while the other method gives you would give you the same amount, just it's a simpler crafting recipe. It's just this I think is a faster way to do it, actually. So there. Now I have all the grout possible. So I'm going to smelt it. So it takes Eight coal for sixty-four grout to smelt. So I'm doing that in each one. Except I won't do that for the last one. It, for the last one, I'll just put five because that should be enough to smelt all that ground. And. It's melted to seared bricks, which I can use for other stuff. I'll probably want more sand, so I'll get some sand so I can make some glass. See, I pretty much flattened this sand field when I was writing it, so I'm just going to get as much as I can. And I'll smoke them. 
So we just reached a 10 minute mark, so the camera stopped recording, so I had to restart it. So, I'm mining sand still, because nothing much happened between the recording sessions. This should be about enough. 64, yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to use the 64 sand. Probably eat a couple of blueberries. And in case you're wondering what this is for, that's my doggy door so my dog can come in. But no other mobs can. And it also lets... It's also a tiny bit of visibility. I, I made it by putting four stairs along like that. Two upside down and two right side up. So, now that I got the sand, I'll put it in this furnace and smelt that. And let's see how, much, how many seared bricks we have so far. Looks like 14 or 13 of each one. Or 12. So, when you make the seared bricks, when you craft the seared brick into seared bricks, that you get the mighty smelting book. So that teaches you all about uh, how much you need to make smelteries. Let's see, that shows a picture of a smeltery. And there's different alloys that you can make. Bronze from copper and tin. Aluminum brass, that's probably the first one I'll make from aluminum and copper. Vanillion, that's the best material to make things out of, which is from cobalt and ardite, which are both the second best. Alumite, the second best alloy, is from aluminum, iron, and obsidian. So, you see, it shows how to make different casts for different materials. So, this tells you how to make everything again. Oh, and you can make brownstone by pouring liquid tin in the liquid basin over gravel. That gives you brownstone, which lets you walk faster on it. You can also make clear glass, which is... So if you put sand in the smeltery, uh, it'll melt and, get, and you'll get molten glass. And if you pour it in a liquid basin, you get clear glass when it hardens. And there's also seared stone. I'm not exactly sure how to make that up. I, I don't know anything about that. So, let's see how many we have now. And we have some glass. So, I'm going to make a liquid tank. No, that's a sear tank. And a smeltery controller. Where should I build this? Probably clear out a room right here. Okay, I'm back and I made uh, the room. So, this is how you make the, the smeltery. You first put a 3x3 three three of seared bricks on the ground then you would put these seared bricks around there, but I'm out of seared bricks. Good thing I have these, so I can make more. So, then, right here, I'll actually break this one, because I need to place it there. I'll place it in between with the smelter controller and the seared tank. Remember, the smeltery controller and the seared tank have to be on the same level uh, and on the same side. So, you can really make these just about as tall as you want. And to make this work, you put lava in this tank, put the ores you want to smelt in here. So, I have some more seared bricks that have smelted. In fact, these are done. And let's see about the glass. 
Okay. So... There. I'm gonna make seared glass. Just for visibility into the tank, you can hear, use seared glass or seared bricks uh, in the walls of the tank. That is, on the second floor and not... On the first floor, I think it has to be all seared bricks and a smeltery controller and this. Actually, the smeltery controller and the lava tank don't have to be on the first floor. They can be on the second or the third, they can be as high as you want, just they have to be there. And you have to uh, put this pattern all around. I'm just adding seared glass here for visibility inside. So see, you, you can see inside there. And I have a crafting table, so I'll put that down. And I'll make a couple other things. Two seared faucets. And then smeltery drains. I'll put these down. Actually, I, I'm going to break these blocks. And... There. There's no three drains. Now I'm going to put down the seared faucets. And, one last thing. This. And. This. So, casting basin and casting table. I'll put the casting basin on that side and casting table on this side. So, that uh, you would. that uh, you would pour things in here to make blocks, so you can make a block of iron or a block of pretty much anything that's molten. Pretty much, meaning that you can't make it out of everything. And here you can make different parts to tools, or you can make ingots if you make the ingot cast. So I happen to have some iron here, I'll make some buckets. And I'll I'll be right back. I'm going to go collect some lava to show you how this works. Okay, so now I have the lava buckets. I'm going to put them in here. You just right click to put them in. And four lava buckets is the maximum you can store. And that's used as fuel in this. So remember I still have iron in here. I haven't taken it out yet. Uh, apparently I can't take that out. I'll just I'll just grind it. But I can't take it out. Uh, well, okay. I've got some copper. I, I'm gonna sleep actually. And now I'm gonna go outside and look for some gravel or gravel or appears at the surface. It's just like normal ore, except that uh, you mine it with a shovel instead of a pickaxe. And it appears at the surface instead of underground. And there's a creeper! Why is there an enderman there? Okay, so I'm gonna repair my shovel since it broke. There. And then I'm gonna mine these. I'm gonna show you how to make the first alloy that I'm going to make. Which will be aluminum brass. So I'm just gonna look for a bit more and then I'll come back to you at the house. Okay, so I made it back to my house. And if you see in the Mighty Smelting book, I'm going to make aluminum brass made from three aluminum and one copper. So, I'm going to go down to the smeltery, and I have only, uh, only five aluminum gravel ore, so I won't be able to make very many blank casts. So... I made three of that, and there. No, wait, that's not right. Okay.
Okay, so what happened is I ran out of time uh, and I didn't notice it, so I'll have to show you how to make these uh, these casts another time. Uh, but basically, you just uh, put uh, the binding, put whatever you want to copy in there, and then pour the aluminum brass over it, and it, when it hardens, it makes uh, the type of cast you want. So now I'm going to make an iron tool once I clear my inventory. So I'll put these away, and then see I've got molten iron now, so I'm pouring it into here. Got an iron rod, and now a pickaxe head, and you get the iron pickaxe head, and one more thing, the tool binding cast. You pour that over it, and there. I had put uh, two iron ingots in there to start out with, and you see one plus a half plus a half makes two. So, also, if you put an iron ingot in there, if you put, like, one extra iron ingot in there that you didn't need to put in, you could always make the ingot cast, which you do just by putting an ingot in there and pouring the aluminum brass over it. So, yeah, that's, that's all for the smeltery for now. Right, now I'm going to make this tool, which you can make in a tool station like, uh, just wait a Okay, so, like, this. I can throw, but I can throw away my old pickaxe now, because I don't need it anymore. Goodbye. So, then I throw this new pickaxe. And, Um, looks like I need to organize the chest a little. No, I won't do that quite yet. I will do that eventually, but not yet. I'll organize the chests once I, uh, once I, once it starts getting really complicated. Oh, you can make sticks like that. I didn't know about that. Okay. So, what am I going to make? Oh, yes. I was going to make sticks, then cast, then a chest, and another pattern chest. So I'm going to put this one right there and store all of the all of these patterns in there. So I'm going to This is the. This is in the last ten minutes of the episode, I think. So. Pretty soon we'll. Uh, uh, pretty soon I'll have to end the episode. And continue uh, making more episodes tomorrow. But not yet. There's still plenty more we can do. Like eat raspberries. So, let me think of something to do, then I'll... Okay, so I remembered I was going to uh, do some thumbcraft things. So, to start, you need to make a wand, which is made from gold nugget, any type of shard, and a stick in the middle. Then you get the wand of the apprentice, which is the, which is the smallest wand, the least powerful. Oh, it's nighttime. I'll sleep through the night, then I'll get right back. Okay, guys, I'm back now, and... I'm going to... make... some tables. So, to make tables, you need some wooden slabs. I think it's like this... something... Oh, I, I remember this. That gets you one table, and I have another table. 
when you place a table down and right click on it with this it becomes a, a crafting table sort of and of course he wanted to print this automatically went in there and there's another use for tables just a moment I can change it to short because there's too much lag so I think you can also make it out of eucalyptus wood. I hope you can. Oh, you can't. I'll put that back in there. And I'll cut down to a few trees now. And there, I've got more wood planks. Probably blueberry. And, I just thought of this. I probably need some pressure plates in front of the door. So, now I can open and close it like that. So, now, I'm going to make the second table that I need. So there, now I have two tables. I need a bit of glass. An ink sack. I'll be right. Okay. Now, I'm back. I got a couple of ink sacks. That took way longer than it should have to find. So I'm making some glass bottles. We find a glass bottle, an ink sack, and a feather. That gives you scribing tools which you can combine with a table, with two tables, that is, somewhere. Um, um, where will I put them? I'll put them right here. Let me right-click it with the scribing tools. And this is how you do research. You also need paper. I just have to have some sugar cane. What you do is you make the paper, you put it in right here, then you put anything in that you want to research. It's so like wood, for example. Apparently there's nothing I can research doing wood. Also there's cursory and thorough. Cursory has less of a chance of losing the item, also less of a chance of making progress. Thorough has better chance of losing the item, but a better chance of making progress. So, I think I know how to get a certain discovery. Coal, I think. So I put the coal in there, and you see that I finished with the potentia and ingus aspect. And I just need to put a bunch of torches in here, and that gets me this night or discovery. I'll show you how to use these discoveries next episode, but see, when you right click with this... Oh, I just remembered. I need to make a Thaumonomicon. I'll pause and get to that. Okay, so I made a bookshelf. It's a vanilla crafting recipe. So you place it on the ground and right click it with the Wand of the Apprentice. And... Okay, it doesn't work on this bookshelf. Okay, so apparently that was a modded bookshelf, and mods don't always work with Thumbcraft, but this is normal bookshelf. So when you right-click on that, you get the Thumbonomicon. It shows all of your discoveries so far, and it tells you what to do with them. So, Nitor, you mix four Ignis, six Lux, and four Potentia. I'll get to that in the next episode, how to mix it and everything. You... There's a bottle of rainwater, smoky quartz, all sorts of pre-made pre discoveries that you can look up. But uh, I think I'm getting close to the end of this episode, so I won't have time to show you all of the things. Eventually, I'll start doing most of the research uh, off-screen. I'm going to eat some meat. And... I'll put this in the table for now, and bye guys! 
I hope you liked episode 2.